Hey, what's happening guys? I've got an interesting little project for you today. I call the easy clock. And we have three parts here. We've got one of these uh, four section eight by eight LED modules. This is the one called the HC16. And we went over that in a previous video, which I'll link to down below. Then we have our real-time clock, which is the DS3231 module, and we have a Nano. Now, this LED module has five connections coming off of it. And if we go up here, we'll look real close, see if we can get that to focus. It's going to focus. Come on. Don't you want to focus for me? Really? One last try. Anyway, VCC, ground, D out, which is mossy, chip select, and clock. All right. Now they are connected thusly. Let's zoom in here. Take a look down at the old Nano. So we have ground and five volts then we have our a5 and a4 which are serial data and serial clock which is the i squared c for the clock then we have over here pin 13 which i think 13 is the clock for the uh yeah, 13 is the clock for the SPI, and then we have 11 is the chip select, and 10 is mossy. And that's it for the setup. That's why I call this the easy clock. It's simple as can be. Now, for the part that's not so simple is the programming. And I'm just going to preface this by saying I am not a programmer. I'm an electrical engineer by trade, currently working as a uh, community college lecturer. So this is not my strong suit. Let's take a look at the programming. Okay, here is the code for the easy clock. Now this I adapted from a library example, the example called print text, which allows you to enter uh, text in the serial monitor and it prints it to the screen. And this is from the MDMAC 72XX library, which is by Marco Colley. So we got a bunch of includes. Here are our libraries. We have the DS3231 library for the clock, the wire library also for the clock, the MADMAC 72XX library, and SPI library. Those are for the LED matrix. Then we have a bunch of other defines here, the print, serial uh, value uh, then you're going to define your maximum number of devices we have four devices here then we're going to define our serial peripheral interface pins we have the clock pin the data pin and our chip select pin and you need to put in your character spacing how many columns between characters then we're going to set up the Mad Max library called MX and it is Mad Max 72XX set up with CS pin and max devices. Then we have some variables. These are the variables for our clock. We have our buffer size, our buffer defined as a char called message, and bool new message available. Now this is the function that prints to the screen. And we're going to come back to that in just a minute, okay? So let's go down to setup. We start MX begin. That uh, initializes the LED matrix. Then wire begin to initialize the reading from the clock. And serial begin, uh, that's what I use for debugging. And believe me, there was one hell of a lot of debugging going on here. All right, now our loop. So the first thing we do 
is we read the clock. Clock dot get time year month date day of the week hour minutes seconds. Then we're going to read our temperature and convert it to Fahrenheit. Now here's where things get interesting. We have to print out these two digit numbers and put them into a character array as single digits so we need to split them out. Not very hard. We're going to use the modulo function. So we have LH which is our left hand digit for the hours. And to do that it is simply hour divided by 10 modulo 10. That will give us the tens position. And then our right hand hours which is our modulo 10 that will give us the ones position. We do the same thing for minutes and we do the same thing for temperature which I thought was all that was going to be necessary. Well it's not because when I tried to print it I would just get crazy characters and I thought and I thought and finally it occurred to me this character array needs ASCII, ASCII uh, printable characters. So if this was printing out left hand, say it's 12 o'clock, left hand hour would be 1, right hand hour would be 2. And if we go and look at an ASCII table, those are unprintable characters. The printable characters begin at 48 right here with 0. So it was really easy once I figured out what I was doing was to come down here and add 48 to it. Now we're going to come back to that. So the first thing that it does is it checks to see if it's 30 seconds or a new minute. And on 30, every so basically every 30 second it prints the temperature. So we start by saying message position 0 space, message position 1 space, this just pads it a little bit. Message position 2 equals char which is a character of the left side of the temperature, the tens, plus 48. So if the temperature is 6, say 69 degrees, the left side would be 6. 6 plus 48 will give us our desired number. If we just try and print 6, we get nothing. Then message 3 equals char right temperature plus 48. Message position 4 is F for Fahrenheit. Message position 5 is a null and that ends it and then we call print text that function and we'll go into that in a second and we delay for one second. So if it's not 30 seconds after an hour or a new minute, I mean 30 seconds after the minute or a new minute, we print the time. So again we start with a padding, then we do our hour, left hand, right hand, a colon, our minute, left hand, right hand, the null character to end it, and we call this print text. So let's go look at this. There we go, void print text. So mod start, mod end, and the message are our arguments. It declares some variables here, state, current length, show length, C buffer, and column. And then we do a control call to the library, MX control, mod start, mod end. But those are the things like shift left, shift up, shift down, rotate, whatever. Then we do a Mad Max 72XX update and Mad Max 72XX off. So what it does here, as you can see, first it loads the next character from the font table. And unless it's the null character, it retrieves the character from the font table. And it displays the character in the column. Then it does the spaces. Then it does the empty columns. And then it does the inter-character spacing then it ends the loop. And then we do MX control mod start mod end update and we turn it back on and we get our printout of either the time or the temperature. 
I know this is a little confusing, but if you go over it a couple times, you'll get it. It's really not that hard. Let's check it out in action. All right, let's uh, have a look at it in action. All right, there we go. I know it's kind of hard to see the numbers on there sometimes. And believe me, here on the workbench, they are brilliant red. I know they just look kind of uh, white to you, but like I said, they are a brilliant red color. And now every 30 seconds, it is gonna flip over and show us the temperature, just like that. So, that's the easy clock. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me the thumbs up, comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.